Um, we, we are located, uh, we're based in Georgia uh, with our engineering offices in Houston. Uh, we've recently opened in London and we've got a full service office in Saudi Arabia. We uh, successfully quoted uh, on the London Stock Exchange on AIM in 2011, uh, raising $16 million uh, to uh, enable the, the business to grow and respond to huge amounts of incoming custo customer demand. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we've had a reasonable share price performance since then. We specialize in produced water uh, and processed water. Produced water is the naturally occurring formation water that comes out of uh, a reservoir along with the oil. That obviously needs to be either re-injected or discharged into the environment. And we form part of the treatment process uh, for, for discharging that into the environment. On the processed water side, this is the downstream water used in petrochemicals plants and refineries worldwide. This is cooling loop water, boiler feed water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, we are part of a, a very significant market. This is what we actually do. The, the Mycelex core technology is a polymer. This is an, uh, a molecule that was invented by our chief scientific officer, which is oleophilic and hydrophobic, uh, which, as you'll know, means that it attracts oil particles and rejects water molecules. The, uh, the polymer is infused onto standard cartridge filters, which are 30-inch uh, or 50-inch long polypropylene or polyethylene filters. Those filters are then housed within micelex designed stainless steel vessels. Uh, those vessels are then installed uh, on oil production facilities upstream and downstream uh, and in refineries and petrochemical plants around the world. And they can be custom designed to meet individual customers' water treatment needs. Because the polymer is oleophilic and hydrophobic, it provides an extremely uh, efficient method of, of filtration. The, the polymer is permanently cured onto the filters. So when the filters come out of those installations, they're coated with oil and they can attract up to eight times their own weight uh, in oil. Because they reject water, they come out completely dry. And so as I said, this gives us an extremely efficient form of filtration. Uh, and we're able to remove oil uh, from water down to about one part per million uh, in real time uh, in flow rates of up to 100,000 barrels per day. Uh, and this, is, this allows us to, to provide a wide range uh, of, of water treatment solutions for the, oil, for the oil industry. This is what it looks like in action. Uh, this is an installation in 2009. Uh, this is the Anadarko Gulf of Mexico rig called Boomvang. Uh, we, were <coughs> we were asked to come in and, and install a fail-safe treatment uh, to, to treat 15,500 barrels per day uh, of produced water to guarantee compliance with overboard discharge. Uh, we did this extremely successfully. The thing to note uh, in this picture is that the system we replaced, which had been designed to guarantee overboard discharge, uh, is demarcated by the red squares uh, in the picture there. So you'll see that we've managed to achieve a 90% uh, footprint uh, and, and weight saving relative to the existing equipment, which we, we were cheaper to install than. Uh, and we have guaranteed their, uh, their discharge to below environmental regulations uh, since 2009. This led us into one of our strongest relationships, uh, which is with Chevron. We are currently installed on two Chevron rigs in the deep water Gulf of Mexico. We recently received 12 months worth of data from, from Chevron on the Blind Faith rig, which is their deepest Gulf of Mexico rig. That's in 7,000 feet of water. Uh, and over 2,000 samples were taken in the last 12 months. Uh, and I'm happy to say that we managed to guarantee that at no stage in the last 12 months uh, did Chevron discharge uh, over the environmental discharge limits into the Gulf of Mexico. We managed to do that uh, with a piece of equipment which took up 140 square feet uh, and required 32 man hours for the whole year. So that was a hugely successful uh, installation for us. The market we operate in, as I said, it's, it's upstream and downstream produced water and processed water, and it, and it is virtually unlimited. Um, standard discharge regulations require uh, oil companies to discharge water back into the environment or into the sea at less than 30 parts per million. On the downstream side, in order to reuse water in, in process critical applications, such as cooling loop water uh, and boiler feed water, that, that oil and water concentration needs to be below 1 ppm, uh, and our polishers are successfully able, able to do that. And for a variety of reasons which are listed there, um, the market is becoming ever bigger for us. In particular, uh, analysis methods are becoming more sophisticated. Companies are de developing continuous inline monitoring equipment using GC mass spec, 
uh, to provide live uh, results to oil companies, uh, and that's having a, a significant effect on the industry. Obviously, produced water treatment and process water treatment has been around uh, as long as oil's been produced and, and being turned into refined products. Um, and there are some very well-established treatment methodologies out there. Uh, most of these use mechanical separation rather than chemical separation, uh, and so they are hampered by a variety of challenges, uh, which I'm glad to say that we've been able to, to overcome, and I'll come on to exactly why that is uh, in just a second. We have three core pieces of equipment. Uh, the first on the left there is an advanced gravity separator, which uses the micellex polymer to increase the coalescence uh, of oil droplets within water, which allows uh, those uh, oil droplets to coalesce quicker uh, and require less uh, residence time, uh, which increases oil recovery and reduces the oil in water concentration of the effluent. The middle unit there is a, a backwashable bulk media contact filter device, uh, and that enables us to remove solids down to two microns uh, at flow rates. That, that system will, will take a flow rate of 38,000 barrels per day. <clears throat> and those two systems were really designed to uh, enable us to control the influence into our core core bit of equipment, which is the Micellex polisher. Uh, that's the, the equipment that uh, uses the consumable filtration cartridges and enables us to get down to less than 1 ppm uh, or, or higher than that, depending on the, the customer requirements. <clears throat> this is a picture of the uh, Micellex separator in action at a petrochemicals plant uh, in Al Jubail City in Saudi Arabia. Sabic has been one of our, our best customers. Uh, we're fortunate to have uh, had our systems installed in three of their plants um, in, <coughs> in Saudi Arabia, which is a huge market for us, obviously given the, the cost of water uh, in that country and the cost of treatment uh, of the water in that country. This particular unit uh, is cleaning the, uh, the cracking column, cooling water. You can see the cracking columns in the background. Uh, we installed a 15, uh, 15 and a half uh, meter cube per hour system to clean the total flow. We were told when we arrived that um, the water had become contaminated with xylene, which is obviously part of the nasty BTEX group uh, of hydrocarbons. Uh, we were told that uh, were the, the contamination levels were 100 ppm and we needed to get that down to, to less than 1 ppm. When we turned up on site, we found that the xylene concentration in the cracking columns was actually 48,000 ppm which was a bit of a surprise. Um, but we successfully treated that and got that down to, to less than 1 ppm to allow that plant to continue operating. So this was partly a, uh, a clean-up operation, but partly allowed this, this uh, particular petrochemicals plant to carry on uh, operating. So we were saving them uh, millions of dollars per day. This is a picture of the, the regen unit, the bulk media filtration. This is an onshore uh, oil and gas project uh, for a Canadian major in the northern states of the US. Um, this, is, this was a six-month trial uh, as that major was uh, determining whether it was going to go ahead with a, a major polymer flood project. Uh, we had a, an oil water separator in, installed here, plus the regen, plus the, uh, the three polishers that you can see there. <coughs> and, and those three data lines are an example of uh, the kind of oil and water concentration levels that we've been able to achieve with those systems. So the average inlet to the oil water separator has been about 600 ppm. The regen will reduce that to about 30 ppm. And then the micellex polisher will guarantee a discharge uh, of lower than 10 ppm. So that was, a, that, was a, that was also a heavy oil application. So that was quite exciting for us as well. So this is a, a key slide. This is where we fit in relative to the existing uh, standard methodology that's been uh, in use in the oil, oil and gas industry uh, for the last decade or so. As I said, the, the standard methodologies are, are restricted uh, by the fact that they use mechanical <coughs> separation um, so that what, what that ultimately means uh, is that they, they struggle to treat oil droplets of lower than 25 microns. Lower than 25 microns, the relative specific gravity differential between oil and water uh, becomes too low for mechanical separation devices to work. So the API separators, which is the standard gravity separator, or a hydrocyclone, which uses centrifugal force to spin out the oil droplets from the water, or the walnut shell filters, which, uh, which capture oil uh, out of the water flow, all of those are limited by their ability to treat uh, less than 25 microns. Because the micellex poly polish polymer chemically attracts the oil from the water, we are, we are droplet size ambivalent, which means that we can, uh, we can treat water with high concentrations of, of very low droplet sizes. 
And that's been particularly useful in the downstream world uh, and in the deep water world where oil droplets typically are, are much lower than, uh, than where they're found uh, elsewhere. And I'll just show you why, why that's important. Uh, this is a standard distribution curve of any uh, oil and water sample. Uh, what we've got is a, a, a standard distribution of, um, of, that, of those droplets by, by size. Um, this is not mathematically generated, by the way, so <laughs> uh, please bear with me. Um, when we say that standard equipment can treat uh, 25 microns and above, um, what this means is that half of that uh, oil and water will be removed, and this might leave you with, say, 50 ppm. Uh, in the in the oil and water of oil and water concentration uh, in the remainder. In order to get that oil and water concentration level down, we have to move that uh, that line to the left. And so, if we can design systems that will remove droplets of 10 microns or so, uh, we can uh, drastically reduce the oil and water concentration of the effluent, and that might get us down to something like 10 ppm. Where my selects has been. Uh, particularly powerful is in upset conditions, uh, where, for example, a well that's been, uh, that's been shut in is brought back on stream. Uh, and what typically happens there is you get a much higher concentration of very, very small droplets. Uh, and in this situation, as, you, as we can see, the standard equipment, which will only be able to treat 25 microns and above, will, will, will leave you with a very, very high oil and water concentration uh, in the outlet. And typically, that'll be in breach of discharge regulations. Even the MySelect system designed to 10 microns will, will only uh, treat a small pro proportion of that. Uh, but because we can get our uh, oil and water concentration down well below uh, one, 1 ppm or, or treat microns, or sort of treat droplets down to well below 5 microns, uh, we can ensure that even in upset conditions, uh, the effluent uh, for the oil companies uh, is uh, significantly lower than, than their requirements. An, an illustration of this, this was our second project uh, for Anadarko in 2006. <clears throat> this was an extremely environmentally sensitive uh, project because it was discharging into an evaporation pond on an Indian reservation in Utah. Uh, it was very early on in MySelex's uh, evolution, and we were, I think, the eighth company that they approached uh, to see if we could handle their produced water problem. They had installed an API separator hydrocyclone an IGF and a walnut shell filter in order to reduce their effluent below the uh, 10 ppm standard that the EPA had required for them to continue operating uh, and to continue to discharge into the evaporation pond. When they were found to be in breach, they had to truck the water away at $6 per barrel in order to re-inject it back into, the, uh, back into the gas wells. Um, and obviously, this was hugely expensive for, uh, for Anadarko. We came in and we installed four of our polishers in a corner of um, a, a shed. Uh, it's actually next door to the walnut shell filter, which you can see there is a significantly larger piece of equipment. Uh, and this installation has been successfully treating 30,000 barrels a day of continuous flow since 2006, and guaranteeing an effluent of less than 10 ppm and an average of 5 ppm. Even more exciting was that our capital cost on this project was uh, less than $300,000, and our operating cost has been 15 cents per barrel. So it's been a, it's, it was a hugely a successful proof of concept uh, for our upstream applications. <coughs> this is some recent data from Saudi Arabia. Um, this is looking at total organic content. Um, the, uh, the, the limit for water treatment for the Royal Commission, which is the, the, the Saudi uh, environmental uh, legislature, uh, is 800 ppm, and that's just to go into their standard water disposal plants. Uh, anything above that, um, and the companies have to have to treat the treat the water themselves. Uh, and this is uh, live data from 2012. Uh, as you can see, immediately upon uh, commencing uh, usage of the MySelex equipment, we managed to reduce the total organic content by 93%, uh, guaranteeing them obviously uh, compliance with with that uh, discharge limit. Uh, and so that's been a, a, a hugely uh, successful uh, range of installations for us in Saudi Arabia. This is just a look at some of the uh, the projects that we've got on, on underway at the moment. As you can see in the fourth column, um, typically most of the installations that we're working on at the moment uh, require the use of, of two or three of, of our bits of equipment. Uh, and that's pretty important for us. We operate according to the razor blade model, uh, which is um, a very nice position to be in. We sell or lease the pieces of equipment to the end customers uh, and then provide them with consumable uh, filtration media uh, as a corollary to that sale. So we have a very nice uh, recurring baseline revenue. Uh, and we're able to, uh, to obviously, to, uh, 
disclose a contractually secure order book uh, in, in our financial results, and, and hopefully um, those, those projects will be, will be in that. This list of projects at the moment is supplemented by something like uh, 100 live proposals uh, in our pipeline. So we are, in, in terms of the company's evolution, at a stage where we have fully commercialized this technology. Uh, it's successfully being used in the field by major oil companies such as Chevron. We were recently specced into the Chevron uh, Jacinth Marlow uh, rig, which is going into the Gulf of Mexico in 2014, with first water expected uh, in 2015. And this was a great proof of concept for us. Previously, we've been treated, we've been used just as a fail-safe uh, retrofit application, but, but now we're actually being specced in by a company of Chevron size uh, to a process-critical part of their oil production. And finally, this is, uh, this is just a look at the number of installations we have worldwide. Uh, a lot of these are both oil and gas and the commercial marine industry applications. Um, the company's been going since the mid-90s, uh, but we are very much at the stage of development where um, the, uh, the prospects are looking extremely encouraging for us. We took on a bit of cost uh, during the IPO in order to add additional resources, as I said, uh, but we're now back into profitability. Uh, we're forecast to do $12 million of sales for the year-end 2012, that's December, uh, and $23 million for year-end 2013, that's in the most recent uh, investment research provided by N plus one Singer. Uh, and we are, we are very confident of, of making those numbers. Thank you.